rig personnel found that drill pipe pressure had increased to 1,400 PSI with no flow on the kill line. The investigation team believes this reading should have resulted in further inquiry into the well's integrity. Instead, the abnormal pressure was attributed to a phenomenon called the bladder effect. Ultimately, the negative test was incorrectly deemed a success by BP and Transocean rig personnel. A more detailed procedure would have helped BP and Transocean personnel to implement and interpret the negative test. The investigation's fourth key finding is that the influx of hydrocarbons into the well was not recognized until it had entered the riser. Well control principles rely on early influx detection and effective response. The investigation team examined real-time data from the rig, conducted dynamic flow modeling, and reviewed witness accounts in order to reconstruct the key indications of flow that we believe were not observed or recognized. It appears that there were a number of indicators of hydrocarbon influx that went unobserved or unrecognized. First, from 2058 to 2108, the drill pipe pressure should have decreased. Instead, drill pipe pressure increased by 100 PSI at a constant pump rate starting at 2101. By 2108, a 39 barrel gain had been taken. Second, from 2108 to 2114, the drill pipe pressure increased by 246 PSI with the pumps off. Pressure should not have changed during this period. And third, by 2131, an estimated 300 barrel gain had been taken. Over the next five minutes, the drill pipe pressure increased by 556 PSI, again with the pumps off. These indicators should have been observable, but it appears the first well control actions were not taken until about 2141, by which time an estimated 1,000 barrel gain had been taken. The investigation team has not reached a conclusion as to why these indicators were not observed or recognized. We note, however, that simultaneous operations were occurring on board the vessel at this time, including mud pit cleaning and mud pit transfers, which may have masked the indications of a hydrocarbon influx. The fifth key finding is that well control response actions did not regain control of the well. Upon recognizing an influx, the well must be shut in, and if necessary, hydrocarbons diverted safely away from the vessel. The investigation team believes that the response on April 20th was not typical of a rig crew that was aware that a significant well control event was occurring. For example, in retrospect, there was about a 40-minute gap between the first indication of hydrocarbon influx and the first well control response. Roughly eight minutes later, the first explosion occurred. When action was taken, the diverter was closed and the flow was routed to the mud gas separator. Also at that point in time, it appears that an annular preventer was activated but apparently did not immediately seal. The BOP sealed about six minutes later. The investigation team believes that the time for effective emergency response was significantly shortened because initial indications that hydrocarbon had entered the well went unobserved or unrecognized. The sixth key finding is that the diversion of hydrocarbons to the mud gas separator resulted in gas venting onto the rig. In a well control event, the riser diverter can be closed and the fluids directed to either the overboard diverter lines or the mud gas separator. Based on testimony and interviews and an analysis of photographs and well flow data, we believe the flow was diverted to the mud gas separator. The mud gas separator is designed to remove small amounts of entrained gas, but not the significant volumes experienced here. Large volumes would generally be expected to be sent overboard via the 14 inch diverter line. As gas dispersed across the vessel, Potential ignition sources were enveloped in a flammable vapor cloud. The seventh key finding is that the fire and gas system on the Deepwater Horizon did not prevent hydrocarbon ignition. Gas dispersion modeling conducted by the investigation team 
shows that rapid spread of gas across the vessel covered the main deck and moon pool areas, overwhelming the secondary protective devices. The investigation team believes that the gas likely entered the engine rooms through the main deck air intakes, resulting in engines going into overspeed. These engines were one potential source of ignition. The eighth and final key finding is that the blowout preventer did not seal the well. The investigation focused on the BOP's emergency systems and why they failed to seal the well after the initial explosion. The investigation team identified issues that we believe interfered with the operation of the BOP. First, the initial explosions and fire damaged the control cables, called MUX cables, and the hydraulic lines. The MUX cables are critical to BOP operation because they provide electronic communication and electrical power to the BOP control pods. This is likely why the emergency disconnect system failed to activate the blind shear ram when it was triggered by personnel on the bridge of the Deepwater Horizon. Second, we believe based on testing done at the direction of Transocean, after both control pods had been retrieved, that the automatic mode function, or AMF sequence, did not complete. The AMF should have activated automatically, without crew intervention, when the MUX cables and hydraulic line were damaged. At least one operational control pod was required to activate the AMF. However, based on testing, there was a defective solenoid valve in one control pod and insufficient charge on the batteries in the other control pod. We believe that the ROV intervention to simulate auto shear conditions likely activated the blind shear rams, but they failed to seal the well and hydrocarbons continued to flow. The investigation team has not determined the reasons for the failure of the blind shear rams to seal. Presence of non-shearable pipe across the blind shear ram, insufficient hydraulic power subsea, and prevailing flow conditions are among the potential causes of failure. The investigation team also found indications of potential weaknesses in the testing regime and maintenance management system for the BOP. The BOP is a complex device, and more may be known when it is fully examined. In summary, as I noted at the outset, the investigation team concluded that there is no single action or inaction that caused the Deepwater Horizon accident. Eight safety barriers were breached. The accident was the culmination of a complex and interlinked series of mechanical failures, human judgments, engineering design, operational implementation, and team communication. These involved a number of companies, including BP. This presentation of the report's findings is intended as a high-level overview. The full report is available on BP's website. BP's senior management has accepted all of the team's recommendations, which address changes that should be made in drilling and well operations, as well as contractor and service provider oversight. Finally, in the course of conducting the investigation, the team learned of many brave acts by people on the night of the accident. I would like to close by recognizing those individuals for the lives they undoubtedly saved and by extending our sympathies to the families of the 11 men who died that night and to the communities subsequently affected by the spill.